Hey guys, today on Dirt Bike Channel, we're gonna be giving away about 40 or 45 of the best dirt bike hacks, tips, and tricks. Stick around. In order to keep your levers from breaking, take your perch off and put one or two wraps of Teflon tape underneath the perch and then put that back together. That allows this thing to be tight enough so that this doesn't come loose, but it's loose enough that it can spin if you take a digger. In order to keep everything tight when you're reinstalling your wheel and you're tightening your axle nut on the other side, easiest way to do it is just to wad up a shop towel or a paper towel and put that in here in between the sprocket and the chain. Roll that back and that will force this forward while you tighten up your axle nut. Slide your brake and clutch lever in on the bars so that the first thing that come in contact with the ground is the end of the bar rather than your brake or clutch and you'll brake a lot less of them. When your clutch is getting harder to pull, pull out this bolt and put a little bit of grease on, the, on, that, on that pivot point and this thing will be buttery smooth again, especially if you have a hydraulic clutch. Tired of having chain lube everywhere? Just use WD-40, it keeps a nice clean chain and you don't get grease all over everywhere, flipping all over your plastics. It's also pretty cheap. Periodically put a little dab of grease right here on the airbox studs and this airbox will come off much easier and you won't break off these studs and you won't be swearing. It's incredibly important to make sure that this fork is not on a bind here down on this axle. I've got everything loose so you can see this moving and floating. I'm gonna push this over so it's actually bound up and watch what happens when I spin the tire and then stop the wheel really quick with the brake. It actually pops right over and becomes right over in the place where it's naturally flush up and down. That's exactly where it needs to float, not on a bind. I can do that again for you. See how there's a little bit of a gap here, like at an eighth, and an eighth of an inch. I'll spin the tire and then stop that. And that is now perfectly lined up and I'm ready to tighten down my pinch bolts. I actually put my fork shoe on and then tighten down my pinch bolts with my uh, fork in perfect alignment right here. Really easy way to do it. The other way to do that is to take this off the stand and then roll the bike forward a little bit and compress the suspension down by hitting that front brake and locking the wheel. But this is just a super simple way to quickly do it. Take the guesswork out of how much chain tension you should have by finding yourself a tool. This one is by Takamoto. You just slide this one in here, right like this, get it in the right spot, and then just adjust the axle back until that's tight and you're good to go. Graham Jarvis told me to take the steering stop bolts out. Now you can't do this on every single bike, but that little bit of extra travel here, as long as you're not hitting your radiators too much, can give you the extra uh, turning radius that you need. And no, it's not gonna make you crash faster because if you were already against the steering stops doing you know, fourth gear through the whoops or whatever, you're going down whether or not this bolt is in or out. So take that out. And if you don't want this to look rusted like mine, you could just take some clear silicone or some black silicone and fill that in there nicely so that it doesn't collect water and rust. Here's another area where we could just fill in with silicone because all this does is collects oil and dust and mud and water so we could fill that in with silicone right here too. You look around from, for some other places on your bike that you could fill in with silicone. If you're slamming through the rocks, you might need a chain guide guard. This will help to keep from breaking those tabs off of your swing arm. You can get these plastic swing arm guards to protect your swing arm and you can also put hose clamps, metal hose clamps on these if you constantly are breaking off the, the zip ties that they install with. If you're going through a lot of rocks, rocky terrain, things like that, you might need a rear disc guard or a shark fin down here to keep from bending your rear brake rotor. If your bike has linkage on the, on the rear, you should find a skid plate that actually covers and protects that linkage or find some other way to protect these linkage parts. Having a hard time making it up a hill? Take some of the air out of your tire to make a bigger contact patch where your tire will squish down more on the ground, give you better traction, and you might be able to make it up that hill with a little less air pressure. Spray some SC1 or WD-40 under the fenders to keep mud from sticking. For trail side repairs and so that you don't have to carry two different tubes, you can actually use a front tube, a 21 inch tube for a 19 or an 18 inch wheel in the back just to get you back to the truck. Get yourself a spoke torque wrench and torque these things down anywhere from about 45 to 50 inch pounds all the way around making sure you don't have any loose spokes. You don't want to lose one of these out on the trail and I'd rather have a wheel that wobbles just slightly than losing spokes. Before we put our new tube in the tire, let's go ahead and put some baby powder in here. Put a liberal amount of baby powder in there and make sure it goes all the way around the tire. 
that will keep from pinching this tube and keep from tearing valve stems off and things. So use a liberal amount of baby powder in here. The other thing you can do is coat your entire tube with grease. Like if you get some axle grease or whatever, you can coat that entire thing and you'll notice that I've got a bunch of baby powder all the way around the inside of that tire. Pretty cool tip for tubes. Install some sort of a grab handle here on the seat. It helps when you're in the gnarly situations on the trail to lift your bike up and out of things or even just lifting your bike on and off the stand. Grab handles are awesome. Want to secure your dirt bike in the back of the truck with zero pressure on the suspension? Check it out. Tie off to the corners of the bed and to your foot pegs. Make sure to pin that back wheel against the side and the front wheel against the corner. That bike will stay in the truck securely for days and days and days with no pressure on the suspension. Get some sort of a nylon toe strap that you can either put in your pack or strap to your bike. This is one that actually just hooks right to my fork leg here. So I can put this on out of the way and it's just there if I need it, if I'm out of gas or I need to pull somebody out of a hill or up a hill or something like that. To change the handling characteristics and overall feel of our bike, we can raise or lower the forks in the triple clamps. If we raise them, the bike will be quicker turning and feel more nimble, uh, but it'll be less stable. If we drop that down, the bike will be slower to turn, but it'll feel more stable at speed. So you can adjust that up and down depending on what you need. We want to have our head bearing tension just enough so that the bars aren't too floppy. The way I'll do that is I'll loosen this bolt and then I can put more tension on this nut up here to get the bars so that they, they'll actually turn pretty easily but they won't just flop from one side to the other. You'll notice this one, if I put it over to the, over to the side and then I give it a bump, it'll fall to one, si one side but it won't just do it on its own. That's about perfect and that makes this bike feel light and nimble but it's not too twitchy. Many bikes have different positions that you can mount your handlebars in. This one came actually closer back towards the rider and I moved them forward to give me a little bit more room. And a lot of bikes will even have some different ways that you can turn around these handlebar mounts to actually fine tune that in to give you three or four or five or six different handlebar positions. So you might wanna do that uh, to give yourself some more room. While it's a great idea to have an inline fuel filter, it's also a good cool thing to add one of these sock style filters here to the top of your gas tank. That way when you put gas down, the, down into that, any of those contaminants or anything are gonna be trapped in the bottom of this filter right here that you can just clean out. Much easier to catch it here before it gets down into uh, the fuel lines. While we're working on the bike, we can use our foot peg as T-handle holders or other things to, as we're spinning through here. You can just put tools right here on your foot pegs. If you get yourself one of these flexible type funnels, you can put it into these hard, awkward areas, things like that, and do gear oil changes or engine oil changes a lot of times without even having to take a skid plate off and without making a huge mess. You can also use these when you're taking coolant out of your bike. Don't just spray the outside of your air filter with oil. Use a good type of oil. This is a good type of oil. There's a lot of different type of oils in there. But then what I want you to do is knead it together and really get it permeated through all of the fibers in this filter by just working it in kind of like you're kneading bread here. Don't twist it or tear it, but knead it in. I don't want you, I don't want to see just people spraying the outside of that. You want to make sure it's permeated and saturated all the way through. For going the extra mile on your air filter, once you have it permeated with air filter oil, then you can go ahead and take some of your grease and just basically spread this grease on like peanut butter around the contact patch where it actually meets the air boot. That way you're sealing off this area so that no dirt or sand can get through there. That's the extra mile. I always like to have a spare filter for every bike that I have. Here's a spare filter for the Beta. The other one is actually on it. These are spare KTM filters. And then these are some dirty ones. And it's just as easy to clean three or four or five dirty filters as it is to one clean one. So I, I'll stack them up and wait until I've got a few and then I'll just do those. Also make sure that if you're doing a pre-oiled air filter, make sure that there's actually enough oil in it. Sometimes these come a little bit dry, but you can also just knead this together like this. That's kind of what we were talking about earlier. Knead that together to make sure that all the oil is actually in that filter and good to go so that when you put it on the bike, you've got the utmost protection. Figure out what bolts you're most likely to lose on your bike and then just take a couple of spares with you. Put them in, put them in a little bolt kit or a bolt bag, take some washers, take some different size bolts and different things so that you've got some spares out on the trail should you lose something. Get yourself one of these slacker digital scale tools made by Motul. I like this one because I can actually hook this here and then I've got a remote readout that I can put up on the handlebar so that I can check sag all by myself and get a perfect repeatable measurement 
every time. You can go straight up and down or you can do it more on an arc. I like to do it on an arc rather than straight up and down. I just like the results that way better. Okay, so if you got your carburetor apart because you've changed needles, now you need to get the return spring back on the throttle. The easiest way to do this instead of fighting it is to actually just thread this thing on. And get this open. Just thread this thing on like this. And there we have it. No fighting trying to pinch this spring while you're putting that uh, cable down in the slide. Are you suffering from dorky decal syndrome? Well, have no fear. After your first ride, just hit these things with a pressure washer pretty up close, and boom, those things will pop off, and you'll have no more dorky decal. Worried about beating up the beautiful plastics on your new bike or the resale value after you beat it up? Just get a full plastic kit for the bike. They're not that expensive, and that way when you go to sell it, you can put the new plastic kit on, back on the bike and make it look fresh again. Install the relatively cheap fork shoes on the bottom of your forks to keep them from getting beat up when you're going through rocks. It also keeps this axle nut from being rounded off. And for an added protection, you can go ahead and get those uh, relatively cheap uh, front rotor disc guards on the bike, which I don't have one here in my shop at all, but that'll help protect that as well. Carry this JB Weld steel stick in your pack. This can help you to fix like a broken engine case or a number of other things out on the trail. You'll wanna carry an air pump that you can use out on the trail that is easy to carry and that you can use to fix flats or just add air into a low tire out there on the trail. This is a good one. Some bikes will let you install an extended brake tip like this one. Here's the stock tip on that bike and you can see the extended aftermarket tip gives a lot more purchase area for you to find that brake in a pinch. So I like to put an extended brake tip on if I can. Although as you see, some bikes don't let you do that very easily without replacing the entire uh, brake pedal. Oh no! You can use these Mr. Clean Magic Erasers to make your white bike look really new again. You just get this wet and then you just scrub on here and you can get all the dinge and the dark stuff to come right off this and get this thing shining and looking like new again with these Magic Erasers. Pretty cool stuff. I take one of these bike pumps. This is just a floor bike pump for like a mountain bike. I have one of these in my shop and I carry one of these around in my truck. That way I can do all my tire pressures and everything. It's actually easier and faster to use this than it is to pump up air in an air compressor. And I can get high pressure and low pressure with this. And I've got a gauge on, on the bottom for my high pressure, so it's pretty slick. When we get a new bike, or even just put new brakes on our bike, we need to run those brakes in because they do not have good stopping power until they're worn in just a little bit. I have to take a brand new bike around the block and basically drag the front brake and drag the rear brake for probably a couple times around the block. Sometimes it takes me as long as 10 minutes of just trying to run those brakes in so that they'll actually grab and stop me. This bike yesterday when I was doing that, it was a danger to society. If I would have just taken this bike out and gone and just gone to a trail ride, I would have killed myself because it doesn't stop you. You've got to wear the brakes in first before you go out there on the trails or the track. Let's talk clickers. It's always good to know where your clickers are at and how have actual, an actual setting for where they should be. In your manual, it will tell you kind of a standard setting for that. So you run the clickers all the way in and then back them out a certain number of clicks. It might be 10 clicks. And also know that on the top of your forks, you need to know if this is compression or rebound. Some bikes are different. On this bike, the top clickers are compression, the bottom clickers are rebound, but some bikes are different. So know where your clickers are at. Make sure that they're the same on both sides. Uh, and up and down so that everything is working as, as good as it possibly can. When we're installing or removing decals or graphics kits, it really helps if you have a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use your wife's hair dryer. Just a little bit of heat, whether you're removing or installing those stickers or those graphics is gonna go a long ways. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna talk about, today we're gonna go over. <sighs> hey guys, today on Dirt Bike, watching Dirt Bike channel and I'm slight. We'll pull out this one pivot bolt in order to keep this tight if you're really getting after it in the it's a good idea to have spray some SC w, WD get yourself a toke get yourself a toke here on the seat it helps it you can mount the handlebars in this one we can use our we can use our foot pegs as two if you want to you can once you got it for going the extra mile on your air foot elf I always like that, and then it takes all the play out of this. These slackers did, but you can beat up the plot. Resale value, <clears throat> this can help this, any, of the, any of the other parts. Some sort of a wit on your bike adds more, easier to uh, find it 
You can use this Mr. You can use these and basically ride it around the bra. Let's talk clickers. It's always good to have 